Aloha. Welcome back to Finny Blips. Thanks for tuning in to part two of our Hawaii series. If you're new here, we make informative vlogs where we take you through our itinerary of where we stay, eat, visit, and our entire cost breakdown of our trip. In our last video, we enjoyed three incredible days exploring the island of Oahu. And in this video, we're diving into another three-day adventure on the breathtaking island of Kauai. Hawaii. Here's the activities we planned. and food we tried. We left Oahu and took an inter-island flight with Hawaiian Airlines to Kauai. It was a short 40-minute flight. Once we landed, we took the shuttle to the rental cars that we booked through Costco Travel. If you're new to car renting, call your auto insurance to make sure you're covered in Hawaii before adding extra insurance because agencies will try to upsell you on add-ons. We checked out Oki Box Lunches. It's located in Kokui Grove Center in the food court area. We believe it's a mom and pop shop that serves Hawaiian comfort food. We got their number 10 regular size Hawaiian plate with Kalua Pig and Lao Lao and the deluxe Oki's Bento to try. The lalao is delicious, the pork is tender, juicy, and has great flavor. The mac salad is also delicious and it's our first time having it with long rice and now we prefer it this way. The deluxe ogi's bento was a variety of different fried items. Our box came with spam, sausage, beef, fried chicken, shrimp tempura, egg roll, and a chicken long rice. This bento box is perfect for taking on the go. Once our tummies were full, we headed to Poipu Beach. This beach is very popular and known for its turtle sightings. There is also free parking right across the beach. We saw some turtles sleeping along the beach with cones surrounding them for their protection. There's also a lifeguard on duty, so be respectful and keep your distance. We wanted to snorkel again and went to the so-called kiddie pool, but this is not a kiddie pool to us beginner snorkelers compared to Shark's Cove in Oahu. The waves were more aggressive and the ground surface was very rocky, so snorkel at your own risk. We don't recommend snorkeling if you don't know how to swim, but if you do, we recommend bringing your own snorkeling gear and water shoes to protect your feet. After drying off, we headed to our stay for the next three days at the ISO. It's an oceanside hotel that we booked through Costco Travel. It was bundled with our car rental and was one of the most budget options that seemed like a great value. We get to customize our package with different rooms such as the ocean view room or the ocean front room. I was a bit confused about their layout so I asked about it and this is how they categorize ocean front room and ocean view room along with deluxe rooms that are also on the second floor. So some ocean view rooms have a view of a pool which is what we got for the first night. The bathroom ventilation is a bit low, so make sure to close it if you need privacy.
The room is nice, but as you can see, there's almost no privacy if there's people at the pool, and it gets a bit noisy. Fortunately, the front desk changed our room to the third floor after the first night. The bathroom ventilation is also higher. We were much more satisfied with our new room. There's much more privacy and even have our own private balcony with the view of the ocean and courtyard. There's a lot of amenities that they offer, like complimentary grab-and-go breakfast. swimming pool, bonfire area, on-site oceanfront restaurant, access to private beach, bike riding, even oceanfront yoga classes and free parking. We headed out to Aena State Park, where we can hike the Kalalau Trail and Hanakapiai Beach. This is really important. You need to make a reservation to hike this trail, and it's not guaranteed that you can on the day of due to unpredictable weather in Kauai. Reservations open up a month before and typically sell out quickly. Sometimes people cancel, but hiking along the Nepali coast is a very high demand activity in Kauai, so people snag tickets fast. These are your reservation options. Each option includes entry, whether you walk, bike, drive, or take the shuttle. The shuttle is the most expensive option, but is almost always available, while the other passes are typically sold out within the hour or day it is released. Driving to Aena State Park was a bit unusual because we had to cross multiple single vehicle bridges where people kind of just mutually agree who goes first. I think there's a hidden rule where 7 or 8 vehicles go at a time, but when I went, I counted 15 ones. At the entrance, we showed our reservation and the person at the booth told us that the trail and waterfall was closed that day due to extreme conditions. We were very let down because we really wanted to hike this trail. We decided to park and walk to Kie Beach and just enjoy our time while we're there. Kia Beach is next to Kalalau Trail, which was taped off, but we saw people returning from the trail. Being curious and also thinking I got played, I asked a hiker returning from the trail if they hiked it that day of, and she mentioned that she camped overnight and hiked back, crossing multiple mudslides and hazards. Aena State Park also doesn't offer refunds if the weather is unfavorable that day of your visit and need to close off the trail, but it's for your safety, although shuttle passes were refunded. For dinner, we stopped by Hamura Simon. This place is known for their Simon Bowls, which is a noodle soup dish usually with simple ingredients. Egg noodles, a light broth, topped with green onions, and a slice of fish cake. 
We got their crispy fried wontons and the extra large special Simon bowl, which came with ham, fish cake, vegetables, wontons, roast pork, egg, and green onions. For a simple broth, it is still very flavorful. I'm glad we tried this place. There's something so comforting about having soup after a long day. On day two, we started the day off with getting breakfast at Smiley's local grinds. We got the pork lao lao plate, which came with a scoop of rice, mac salad, chicken long rice, and lomi salmon. And we also got the Smiley's chicken plate that included a scoop of rice and mac salad. The pork lao lao is flavorful, and I love that it's steamed in the taro leaf, so it makes the pork juicy and tender. The side of chicken long rice is also really tasty too, and the lomi salmon really helped make the dish refreshing. As for Smiley's chicken, it was absolutely delicious, especially with the crispy skin left on. It was irresistible. I would definitely order it again. We had plans to go on a hike today, but why not invite another buddy to come along with us? We stumbled across this unique program at the Kauai Humane Society to take one of their shelter pups out on a field trip for the day. Reservations can be made online, but they also take walk-ins. Pickup time is from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and you must drop them off before 5 because that's when their dinner time is or else you'll get charged a fee. And if you so happen to decide to keep your furry friend forever, it'll be $200. So do with that information what you will. Meet Alita. She's a one-year-old hound mix. Alita was abandoned at Waimea Canyon for not doing a good job at hunting, but she's so sweet. Despite her high energy, she is quiet and doesn't bark at all. The Kauai Humane Society provides a backpack for all of her essentials. Treats, toys, water bottle, doggy bowl, poop bags, and a towel. We took Alita to the Quilau Bridge Trail. That is a 3.6 mile round trip at moderate difficulty. The hike immerses you into the forest and you're surrounded by lots of nature. It is also very muddy, so sturdy shoes and hiking sticks are recommended. Don't worry about getting muddy because there's a river to clean off the mud. Alita absolutely loves getting muddy and makes for a fantastic long distance hiking buddy. We definitely experienced drastic weather changes during the hike. It started pouring rain, then became sunny later on. There is a rest place at the halfway point with shade and picnic tables for a beautiful view. We came across a few other pups on the trail who were also from the Kauai Humane Society. This field trip program is such a great opportunity for shelter pups to get some fresh air and exercise and encourage their adoption. After our muddy hike and Alita's zoomies in the river, we headed over to Kalia Beach to walk along the Kapa'a coastal path. Our time with Alita on this field trip is absolutely unforgettable. We highly recommend adding the Kauai Humane Society to your itinerary and spread some love to pups in need. We wanted to check out Costco to see some special Hawaiian items there. We picked up some sushi for dinner. I mean, look at this ahi tuna sashimi tray. We also got the mixed combo deluxe that includes crunch, rainbow, caterpillar, and dynamite roll. And the inari bomb, which is fried bean curd with white rice, seaweed salad, and spicy tuna poke. The ahi sashimi platter is worth every penny. It tastes so fresh and buttery. The portion size is generous and the price is unbeatable. The Inari bomb had a lot of rice, but was still flavorful. Our favorite was the spicy tuna pokey Inari. The mixed combo deluxe was just alright because the rice seemed a bit stale, but it offered a good variety. The next day, we grabbed some snacks from ISO's grab and go breakfast and headed over to our first adventure of the day. We booked an airplane ride that tours over the island of Kauai. 
we chose to fly with Wings Over Kauai for their Air Van Grand Deluxe Tour. It was around $165 each person after taxes and fees. Seats are randomly assigned, but everybody is guaranteed a big window seat. It is a one-hour tour that flies around the Nepali Coast, Jurassic Park Falls, Wamea Canyon, and much, much more. Wings Over Kauai offers an alternative experience to the popular helicopter tour. It's important to note that passengers must weigh under 300 pounds at the time of check-in, and seating assignments are typically determined on how the pilot balances the plane. Our pilot is very knowledgeable about Kauai and its history. I got to sit in the front seat. It was a very tight fit, but an incredibly rewarding experience. Here's the seating arrangement. Our next adventure is the kayak and hike to Uluwe'i Falls, also known as Secret Falls. There are two famous waterfalls within Wailua, the Wailua Waterfalls and Secret Falls. The Secret Falls is a more secluded waterfall that is mainly accessed through kayaking and hiking. Our tour with Kayak Wailua consists of 5 miles of kayaking on the Wailua River Valley and 2 miles of vigorous hiking to the Secret Falls waterfall, with a 30 minute break in between at the waterfall for swimming and picnicking. We recommend wearing water shoes on this adventure because you will walk into mud throughout the hike and need to have a good grip onto really rocky surfaces. Some people prefer hiking shoes, but we were glad that we decided to use water shoes instead. Don't worry about the mud because there will be a lot of opportunities to wash it off. Kayak Wailua provides a dry bag and a backpack to put your belongings in, and they have life jackets available too. They also have a water refill station with a free sneaker or water shoe rental for the trip. There's also free private parking here. We feel that this whole experience is of moderate to challenging difficulty, but overall this whole experience was a 9 out of 10 for us. You don't need prior kayaking experience as your tour guide will give you a brief lesson before heading out. We were provided with homemade bamboo sticks, which really helped us a lot with balancing and getting through the mud, water, and rock. Remember to bring your own picnic lunch and don't be like us. We forgot ours in the microwave at our hotel, so somebody got a free chicken bake and hot dog, and we were starving. We decided to try out a place called Lava Lava Beach Club for dinner, which was a block or two away. There's a parking lot in front, but if you drive towards the back, there is free valet parking. This place is a beachside restaurant within the Kauai Shores Hotel. 
we had a beautiful sunset dinner with an oceanfront view with live music playing. For our appetizers, we order the bamboo pupu, which is a three-item sampler of coconut shrimp, calamari, and ahi poke with sweet potato chips. The coconut shrimp is our favorite. We also ordered the Hawaiian pizza, which has kalua pork, pineapple, fresh mozzarella, and scallions. It is cheesy, sweet, and slightly charred. For our entree, we got Hugo's teriyaki steak that comes with fried rice and mixed veggies. The steak is actually so tender, and it's prepared in their house made marinade and topped with diced mango. It sounds really sweet, but it actually isn't. We give this restaurant a 10 out of 10. The environment and food is a great place to spend dinner by the beach at Kauai. The next morning, we checked out of our stay at the ISO and headed to Coconut Marketplace for their farmer's market. Most, if not all, of these boots take Venmo or cash. We wanted to try out an actual coconut and we heard there's a guy with a machete that chops some up here at Kawaii Coconut. Freshest coconut you can get. You drink the juice first and bring it back to his stall to get it cut open and eat the coconut flesh. It's like jelly. Coconut juice is refreshing and not overwhelming. Definitely a must try. We walked around and saw this. Ube butter mochi. 10 out of 10. Homemade, chewy, custardy, so soft. Flavor isn't too sweet and it is ube flavored. I should have gotten more. Next, we tried out some Hawaiian papaya. It is fresh and sweet. Super refreshing and it is $10 for a cup. We sampled a sugarcane stand with different flavors like ginger, lime, and lily koi. We liked the mix of lily koi and the lime, so we got that. It is so refreshing, delicious, and sweet. We really enjoyed this drink. After getting more snacks than intended, we headed to Pono Market. We got the number 5 plate with one hot entree, sesame ahi, and spicy ahi poke, and rice. For our hot entree, we got the fried chicken, and it was just okay. But their poke though, it's outstanding. It is the freshest and tastiest poke we've tried in Hawaii. If you do stop by Pono Market, get their poke. We had some time before our flight, so we took an Uber to get some shaved ice nearby and enjoyed it on the beach. This is the total cost of how much we spent in Kauai for two people. Thanks for joining us on our trip to the island of Kauai. If you enjoyed this informative vlog and found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to our growing channel and check out our last video of what we did in Oahu. Thanks for watching Finnybits. See you in our next video.